Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Realism Tips. This week we are going to be focusing on weather patterns and specifically cold weather patterns. But this week we are going to be focusing on weather and how it can affect the behavior of your dinosaur. So just for a quick little tip here, for Sarcosuchus especially, which is pretty common associated with being similar to modern crocodilians, which are cold-blooded, they would probably have to spend more extensive periods of time basking in the sunlight to try and absorb some warmth, especially as it gets colder. However, as we start to get into worse and worse weather, dinosaurs could get more irritated with the weather and seek shelter. In particular for Sarcosuchus, shelter could lie in the form of underwater. If you've ever been swimming in the rain, you know sometimes that cold rain coming down on you can feel a little bit more overall jarring than going down into the warmer depths. This can be especially true with weather patterns like snow, in that but dinosaurs like the Sarcosuchus or Megalania that are cold-blooded but have a harder time trying to survive. They can't regulate their own body temperature, so they're reliant upon their surroundings to keep them going. So when it gets colder outside, they're going to have a much harder time. One good thing to keep in mind, and which was suggested, is that water as a whole is going to retain temperatures of its surroundings a little bit better. So water, when it's warm out, will retain that heat after it's already been cold, and it will remain warmer for a bit longer. Water as a whole is great at insulating, that's why a lot of animals can actually hibernate in and under water during the winter months. So Sarcosuchus and Megalania to a lesser extent could certainly shelter down here under water, especially closer to the very bottom of it. Whenever the weather is poor, they'll just generally speaking help them out a lot with the regulating their body temperature in bad weather. If a Sarcosuchus or Megalania or other cold-blooded reptile does use the water as a refuge, however, they'd be less likely to leave because now they're going to be at more risk whenever they leave into the cold air above. So you probably wouldn't see many wet Megalania or Sarcosuchus on the surface. But that's not the only way to stay warm. In general, animals that are larger are going to have an easier time regulating their own body temperature. They will just put out an exorbitant amount of heat the larger that they are, and generally speaking, may struggle in ways to find to actually cool themselves down. So larger animals may have to worry about lethargy less, but they could still be affected. Even just finding little areas like this to shelter in and hunker down to try and regulate some of their heat may be needed. Of course, animals can always find shelter under trees, by rocks, or within caves. Caves would definitely be the most preferred method as caves will tend to regulate their own temperature, especially deep ones. So caves would actually be a more universal temperature year round. In winter time, they would be warmer than their ambient temperature outside, and in summertime, they would tend to be cooler. So caves are always going to be a good, a good shelter no matter the time of year. Of course, too, if you have friends or group mates to be around, you could also huddle up with your group mates whenever it starts to get cold outside and therefore you can regulate one another's temperature a bit better. Certain animals, especially social animals, may be more prone to doing this than others, but it, it's still a good tool to have in your back pocket for when things get a little bit too chilly. Additionally, this could be the very first time that my dinosaur sees snow, so I could investigate as an adult in a variety of ways. Of course, it could be something fun to chase, even as an adult. You could try experimenting with it, seeing if it's something that you can eat or bite or if it's dangerous. You can sniff it. 
you want to see more about the sniffing concept, you can always check out uh, the tips that I did about that as well. But you could sniff it. You could also shake off the snow. That could express discomfort or it could be a way to actually get any accumulating snow off of you. And you can also even stretch a little bit to help keep your muscles limber in the cold. Sometimes you can get pretty stiff whenever it is cold outside and it's good to keep your joints loose for any fight or flight that you may have to experience. Now, snow like this where the sun's kind of starting to come out in the background could be a good time for your dinosaur to feel a little bit more energy than if it was cloudy or dreary. Uh, some of the dinosaurs that are more tending towards cold-blooded could become a bit more active as the sun warms up a little bit. After all, just because it's snowing doesn't mean it has to feel super cold outside. It could just be really cold up where the snow is forming. And then when it lands, it could be way too warm and melt immediately. Which is a pretty good going theory for why snow would never accumulate on any of the Path of Titan servers. Naturally speaking, smaller dinosaurs like the Latin would be most affected by temperature changes just because there's more surface area to body mass for the heat to escape to. Latin, however, does have a natural advantage in its feathers. So Latin would be able to stay a little bit warmer, a bit easier, especially if it has a pack to cuddle up to. Even then, you could still see a Latin trying to shake off the snow or any irritation that may come with that. And just generally speaking, trying to keep warm. Moving, in general, is also a great way to stay warm. So the more that you move, the more that your butt will keep pumping to all your extremities as well. So you can sit close to walls and within caves again for a little bit more shelter just to try and stay away from some of that snowy precipitation. Now, dinosaurs like the Latin here that are melanistic would be a little bit less affected than those that have lighter patterns, as dinosaurs that are melanistic uh, would have naturally that darker pigmentation, which makes it a little bit warmer. Of course, this has its own downsides in that melanistic animals would be more prone to overheating in warmer climates or months. Um, but in the wintertime, or if it's snowing or raining, that extra little bit of insulation can prove efficient. As I was saying before though, smaller pursuit animals like Latin could be more prone to playing and chasing in the snow, even if they aren't young. So. If they are drawn to the movement and there's all these falling flakes, you could always mimic excitement by jumping, fighting, chasing, trying to get at that snow for yourself. Of course, if you're young, you're going to be more prone to mimic those play behaviors, but think of your animals like dogs and cats. Some of those predators just never lose those instincts, so that could be something that you could play out on your Latin as well. And as the snow starts to abate here, I think we are going to leave it off there. I hope that was helpful in helping you to roleplay out the weather with your dinosaur and just giving you some ideas about what could work well and what may not work very well. Obviously, it's going to vary depending on what the actual weather is and what dinosaur you're playing, but these are just general tips to keep in mind. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the acting question channel of the Discord to be answered by Elite Actor Plus at the moment. And you can also leave comments or suggestions in the comments below. But until next time, stay safe, stay happy. I'll see you next week, and bye!